guys, welcome back to another episode. I'm your girl Kiva. And I'm Adriel. And today we will be talking about the 10 things that you should ask your partner before you get married. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You clicked the right channel. Probably not the couple you were expecting to see, but you did click the right channel. I'm Jasmine. And I'm Dave. From Engineer by God. And we are so excited to be doing this collab with Kiva and Adriel. We hope that once you guys are done watching this video, you head over to our channel to get the other five questions to ask before you get married. And if you're watching their video and you aren't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Right, right. <laughs> so number one, what are your religious beliefs? We believe that this is a super important question. The Bible talks about being unequally yoked and you know, this can be a huge issue in the long run. You know, different beliefs. We already are coming in with different scripts, um, different habits, you know, so different beliefs. It's important to know where you stand. Yeah, because like, what if someone's Christian and Muslim? That's not gonna really gel, you know, like yeah. you have to ask if, even if they have any, cause you might be, agnostic whilst one is an atheist or agnostic whilst one is a christian and you know it's good to be on one accord mm -hmm. a house divided among itself can't stand and then you have to think about your kids in the long run if yeah. you're a christian and your spouse is of another belief which side yeah, will the, ch will the child choose you know and you don't want to put your kids in that compromising position so it's good to ask those questions and to see if you want to proceed with a relationship or compromise. And also being unequally yoked, you could be in the same church mm. and still don't be in line with what the Bible says. That's so facts. it don't mean just because we're in the same religion that we equally yoked. Yep. So you gotta check yourself for that as well. Secondly, where the money reside, where the money reside, where the money reside, where the money reside. Yep. Finances. Finances is one of the biggest reasons for divorce in this day and age. Yeah. And it can really make or break a marriage. Now, I really believe you should ask these questions. First of all, when we're dating, how much debt do you have? Mm -hmm. What's your credit score? Is Does your debt becomes my debt? You know, like for example, for us, he was a student mm -hmm. when we were dating and he had some student loans. I was working, I already finished school and um, I had savings. So before we got married, we decided that um, let's clear debt before we got married because, you know, the two shall become one. I was okay helping pay that off because at the end of the day, if he died and we married, that debt is mine. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's inherited. It's inherited. Yeah. So be on one accord with the finances. And you know, like, do you want one account? or do you want two accounts yeah. you know some people have issues with that and you have to really do what works for you for us we have one account so again you know in regards to the student loan that's why it made sense for us to to pay off a, a loan i made it up to her it was her choice i didn't force her to do it no we decided together and she decided and i'm grateful that she decided that you know let's clear our debt and we started our marriage debt free Definitely. So, you know, you gotta, you gotta weigh up the goals. It might be a heavy conversation to have in the early stages of dating, but I mean, at some point, you can get to that point. At some point, you can get to that stage where you're, you're comfortable having these conversations. But you know, I read something uh, on Instagram, I mean, it was like, if you can talk about sex in a relationship, Ooh. you could talk about finances. Because there you go. ain't no peen entering vagine if you, you know, like, you don't know how to sort your finances out. We need to be on one accord. Yeah. And how does your spouse handle money or your partner? Because, um, for example, when I was single, I could just go to the mall and spend what I want and don't discuss and be okay with it. While it's him, on the other hand, he be like, okay, do I really need this? Do, you know? And so, in order to avoid conflict, yes, I am a working woman and I could go out and get what I want, but at the same time, it's like we still have to discuss these things because if I get something for 500 bucks, it's like, okay, babe what why yeah. you know like you have to have these uncomfortable but needed yeah. conversation the next one is what is your love language i think this is also another important point we read the book um five love, five love languages by gary chapman and we'll you know we'll probably put the picture up or put it in the description it's just a great book that helps you understand your love language and your partner's love language sometimes we love each other how we want to be loved 
but you know we have to love our spouse how they want to be loved right yes. it's a selfless act so it's something to discuss if your yeah. partner loves quality time and you keep buying them gifts it's it's not gonna work is it you don't want your love tank to be on e mm. and that's in the book we read that before we got married and yeah. it really helped open our eyes to understand one another's because like he's one another because his needs aren't my needs and vice versa so we really have to respect and understand mm -hmm. the other person and say okay how can i cater myself to you so that you feel loved yeah. in this relationship and guys we wanted to suggest some books also to you know date if you're thinking about dating if you're engaged even if you're engaged yes that's right um some books will shoot them up you know five love languages i know that's a big one um things i wish i knew before i got married sacred search yes sacred marriage for the married couples yes listen knowledge is power yes. read these books yes. and, and learn and improve in your relationship yeah um another thing i believe is so important is to ask your spouse how do you handle conflict now some people might say okay that's just not needed but have you ever seen your spouse angry mm. how do they react when they're angry do they become erratic violent yeah. Yeah. um do they stonewall I mean do they not do they shut down and don't talk to you or anyone these things can be a hindrance on your relationship because when two people come from two different life scripts you're gonna have you're gonna view the world differently yeah which will result in sometimes conflict and how you resolve that conflict, how you handle that conflict, really, really determines the, the trajectory of your relationship. Mm. Yeah, and I think one point to consider with that is they may not know exactly how they act or, or if they're doing something wrong. So speak to their friends, speak to their family members. Their siblings mm. will most likely know them better than you know you do and they'll be able to let you know how they act how you know ask those questions like how are they when they're angry you know you're not trying to judge them for you know their their drawbacks but you want a good understanding of where they are at and how you can and if you can move forward with those issues but not only moving forward but seeking help to overcome mm. those issues right most definitely um what kind of childhood did your partner have now this is a loaded question because we know that a lot of people have different experiences um, through childhood. Some have good experiences, but a lot of people go through and experience trauma. And it's super important to unpack the trauma and see if they're willing to, you know, you're not mm. prying, but again, you want an understanding of where they are at. It's important to know that history so you know how you can move forward and heal from the past and and be a better spouse or, or be a better person first and foremost before mm -hmm. you become a spouse yeah and it doesn't even have to be a traumatic event yeah um like you like i said earlier we come from two different life scripts True. like for example adriel uh, he grew up in london sorry he Whoa. grew up did you hear he that grew up in the You're uk in london you grew up in, in birmingham you grew up in the uk <laughs> right so yeah. it's like more of a busy pace lifestyle yeah whereas i grew up on, on on the island like you know i reach when i reach like yeah and time like for example we couldn't understand like if i i'm a bit late or delayed in getting ready he used to get so yeah, upset to get upset but because i had an understanding of his childhood and how he was raised and where he grew up I was a little bit more empathetic towards his reaction. I hope he was a little bit empathetic towards me. Yeah, as it was well. a challenge. But, you know, this is this is the game. This right? is the game we yeah. play. But just having that understanding allowed me, and I'm hoping him. I don't want to speak for him, but allowed us to be more empathetic towards one another mm. and understand that we see life through a different lens yeah. because we grew up differently, we were raised differently, and that's just what it is. For the remaining five, please do not forget to head over to our friends page, Engineered by God, right. Dave and Jazz. And we'll put a link in the description to their channel, awesome couple, um, Christian couple also, go and check them out. Forget. All right. We cannot leave without reminding y'all that you are blessed, blessed and highly favored. favored. We're gonna see y'all in the next video.